Okay, welcome to Easy Learning. This is a uh, very short introductory to Picnic. A Picnic is an editor and, and graphics program that is free to join and if you want some extra effects get a premium account. Uh, it's really easy to learn and it's heaps of fun to use. So follow us on these few short steps and then we hope you'll follow the links and join up on Picnic and uh, start learning today. Okay, welcome to uh, our introduction for you to Picnic. Uh, Picnic is an image ed editor and it's fun, free, easy to learn and uh, in no time at all you'll have yourself set up um, to learn and have fun, explore this website, find out what services are available and what's suitable for your project. And um, if you want to get a premium account, you get a few extra services, but by all means, try the free Picnic. Now, Picnic is accepted on a lot of websites as an editor, so you'll find it right across the internet. Uh, it's been going for some years now, seven, eight years or something, I'm not too sure, but um, it's certainly uh, always bringing in new effects and um, premium services, fun things to try. And also they have uh, like seasonal things that you can join in and uh, use, use their, uh, you know, their um, little uh, cartoons and things that they've supplied people with. Now if you don't have um, anything to practice with, simply uh, upload any image um, that we've offered you on WizIQ. We've got uh, content available under the uh, public contents. If you go in there you'll see that we've supplied you with um, um, something like when you go into a paint store and you see a selection of colours and you can use these colours, you can upload them and you can add graphics and uh, draw on them and, and find out different effects. Other than that, um, you're welcome to upload any of our material and um, have a go. Or simply take a photograph of yourself using your webcam. That, that's not hard to do and you can start um, straight away learning how to use um, all the different effects and stuff. It's good fun. So that said, please do comment and um, any questions or queries or anything that you have to add to help other people learn more about Picnic, um, certainly make your comments. Comments are moderated, um, so if, if it's not suitable, it, won't, it will be rejected. Um, but other than that, you're most certainly welcome to join us on one of our websites and promote your artwork that you do here. Uh, we have three art websites. There's Telmeda, that's www.talmidahs, Telmedas.com, or BaysideStudio.com, um, and what's the other one? Well, once you get onto any of our websites, you'll, if you go down to the bottom, you'll see that we've made a web ring of all our websites, so to find any of our other websites, just go down the bottom and click through the web ring till you see something that, that uh, suits you. For example, you might make um, artwork that is suitable for nightclubs and that sort of thing. Well, we've got a website for um, dancing and nightclubs and that sort of thing um, on the internet and you're welcome to join, become a member, upload and share your uh, images. But there are plenty of different ways of doing that and if this helps you for your business or for fun or just personal things like maybe making uh, um, wedding photographs or designing invitations, there's many, many applications Picnic can be very, very helpful for. So, you know, use it often, use it well and don't be afraid to explore and learn all the different facets of it. Now, I'm going to be putting um, some links up as well, um, but Picnic is uh, www.picnik.com. Other than that, you can use our tips and advice and just Google for Picnic, 
or um, another way you might find it in your uh, on Facebook and different places that use it. I'm not sure entirely if Facebook uses it, but many um, of these big websites where you upload images, um, they're keyed into this so that you can edit them before you finally post them. Anyway, that said, um, come and join us on this this in. Just a, this is just an introduction. It's just very quick. It takes you through very briefly. Um, so thank you for joining us. Okay. Um, this is looking for Picnic through a browser. You can find Picnic if you're on Facebook, um, oh, a few, few other different places, they all use um, Picnic. Um, all the webs websites have got Picnic, if you're um, making a website. Um, there's qu quite a number of people use Picnic, so you will see it from time to You didn't used to, but it now, you know, six or seven years later, it's, it's really becoming quite popular and a lot of people do use it. And once you get into it, you'll see the amount of services that are available. Um, and these can range from just helping you edit your image to making collages and well, all different, you know, things like that. And then even then, you can link these images to people who print it for you. So it's a great service all in all. And, you know, the, the, the more you get into it, you'll see how it could suit your project and um, and you'll get better at it you, you might go a bit, I, I did personally went a bit funny with all the uh, effects and I probably used too many at first because it was just so exciting to see all these things but um, once once you sort of chill out and you just you you use less uh, effects and whatnot and you tend to learn to keep it simple <laughs> for sure but in any case how to find picnic you just simply pop it in your browser and click and you'll get as you see here I'll use red you see here on Google I pick in put in picnic um, and then up comes a whole list of different um, links that you can go and investigate as with any program you'll find that if you put in Adobe you won't just get one link for Adobe you'll get all their different products and services and it could take pages um, but basically you just want to sign in and register and use the program so use the one that that obviously looks like you can sign up and use and then off you go and um, and the same is is um, if you want to just um, put a shortcut to this page or put it in your favorites, that this is good so that you can come back to it later and refer to the other things available. So that's that one. Okay, now we've told you about Picnic and you want to know, well, how do I find it? What you do is you just simply click on uh, your start button at the corner of your screen if you're using Windows and right up the top underneath your username it will be uh, your browser and it will be either Internet Explorer, Firefox or some other such explorer um, and you just click on that and then what you get is um, up in your right hand corner usually is a, uh, a box where you can print and uh, what you do is you print in picnic and make sure you spell it correctly p-i-c-n-i-k and uh, click go and it will give you this list down here what you see this list here and um, just simply uh, click on picnic link and then you can join and create an account for yourself
Okay, here's where you create an account. Um, I, I do suggest that you create a name that you can use um, right across the forums and all the different services and products and things that you enter and they ask for a username. Um, use this, especially if you're a professional or, or a business or something. It, it is a very good way of, of branding yourself and once people have seen you around for a while, for a year or so, they see your name, they'll start going, oh, and they might click and follow you for, for something just because they've seen your name pop up in the same circles, which you will find it will happen as, as you go in your industry. People in your industry will more than likely follow the same links that you do. So um, it's quite good to use the same name, or at least have one name f for one purpose, and no more than two or three different names. Don't feel that you need to create a different name each time. Very confusing. Same with passwords. <coughs> I beg your pardon, they say to change them every few weeks, but um, that's up to you how you do that. And then, um, I can't remember what's, what's here, but in any case, you just um, simply fill these out and uh, do read the um, terms and conditions. They are the general terms and conditions that you'll you'll find around the place, but you need to read them. And this goes with anything that you sign up for, whether you've paid for it or it's free. Um, and you must understand these conditions because otherwise it can create a headache later on. Anyway, you uh, simply click this one here where it says I accept, and then um, it'll all happen, and then you'll come up onto a screen where there's the dashboard. And this, this is all um, takes just a few minutes. I'm pretty sure there's also a, a verification email, um, but this comes almost instantly, and uh, you can set up within a matter of a few minutes. And if you want premium, I think they take uh, credit card and PayPal, which is really great. And it's about $30 or so, US dollars. So this is where you create your account. And uh, I think you can use uh, without signing up, but if you want to have some of their services, you need to register, um, especially uh, the inventory. They save your saved images, the ones that you save. They save up to 100 for you or something like that um, so that you can keep working on them. So that that's a good thing. Create an account. It's a free account, so don't worry. You're not getting charged for anything. And they don't use your email or name for anything either. So don't feel, feel confident about that. So that's that for this one. Okay, this is uh, on your dashboard, this is where you create an account. You first of all put in your username. Um, some programs recognize uh, capitals and small letters, others don't. Some require you to have a number or, or a mix of um, letters in the name. But I would keep it simple, something that you are familiar with and can remember and use all the time. And most people will not allow you to use any uh, violent sexual terms or, you know, anything that's just, you know, a bit nasty. They just don't, won't allow it. You'll, your account will be deleted in most cases. Password, don't share it with anyone. Make it uh, at least, I think, seven numbers and letters long. And uh, you simply... Uh, put that in and uh, accept the terms and conditions and you tick this box and you accept and create your account and uh, I think you sent out an email and you simply click on that and it validates all of the information you've given them previously and then uh, you can sign in ready to rock and roll Okay, here we are signing in to Picnic. Um, you've created a username and a password, 
and you validated it and now here you are signing in um, I think you don't have to worry about capitals I think you can just put it in small letters and it comes in with your password if you find you for you remember your username but you've forgotten your password um, you, you can uh, simply click up here and uh, it says forget your name or password click up here and it'll take you to um, the next page which will show you and uh, it, they'll help you out there recover your uh, information right um, this is where you sign in you simply put your username in your password click sign in and it'll take you to the dashboard and from there on in you're editing images now I, if I haven't said it to you before I'm saying it again um, use a username and if you can create a name that you can use all across the internet all the things that forums, uh, blogs, anything that you enter or comments you leave or whatever um, all have the same user man and that way if you're uh, an academic or a professional you can build up a following and people will after some some time depending on how much you give it um, will recognize your name and uh, be more inclined to believe what you say so think about that and the same with the password make sure you've got a good password um, you have to comply with each every product that you use has different uh, requirements but basically they want seven letters uh, or eight letters at least sometimes you have to include numbers and on occasions you have to have one uh, capital letter um, so sign in and start enjoying your picnic Okay, um, say that you, you've um, tried once, you've signed in and uh, for some reason you made something but now you want to go in and change it or you've come back in and you want to use Picnic again um, but you've simply forgotten all about uh, what names you used or anything like that. We all do it and so what they've done here is, is that you simply put in the email that you signed up with it's as simple as that. Send an email and then they send you immediately send you um, the information you require to sign in. So that's really easy peasy. And um, if you're not if you're not sure and it's I think if you put in one that's not registered with them it tells you straight away this this email is not registered with um, Picnic. And then you obviously you've got to remember which one that other one that you might have used. So that's this one's dead easy. So if you join in and you for come back and you've forgotten, just simply um, put in the text and then click send email. Within a couple of minutes, you'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay, on this page, this is if you've forgotten your. Um, your username or your password uh, it's so easy especially when you've just signed into something and, you, and then you don't use it for a wee bit and you come back and it's, you just can't remember so I, I basically try and use a, a similar or a same name um, for all my products and services and that way it helps me um, just in time and frustration and I change the passwords according to what service I'm using and that helps me also identify if I find a password and a name it, it helps me identify what it might belong to by the password even though it's the same name so all you put in here is your email and if it's not the one that you registered with it'll say that this email has not been registered with us so obviously if you're using two or three you've got to select another and you simply type that in and then press send email it sends you an email within uh, seconds most times it gives you instructions to um, your whatever your problem is 
and uh, next to no time you're up and running. So if you've forgotten, don't worry about it. Look, look for the uh, forgot your uh, <laughs> password or whatever they've put on it. Click it and then it's very, very easy to get back. Okay, this is the uh, dashboard that you see when you've um, signed in and it asks you here to um, upload and um, I'm suggesting that if you want to upload images to the uh, internet you really should uh, first of all make sure the file name is correct uh, make sure it's the right um, DPI and all that sort of thing appropriate for the project and uh, when you upload it, it's all ready to go. It's not. It's not going. You don't have to have six different f files of your image, all all badly written, and you could never find it. So simply from the very beginning, create a good file name. And this could be that you start with a project name, um, and then the artist, and then the subject, or something something along those lines or it could be uh, three things at least, three identifying pieces of information. Uh, it could be a date, it could be an object, it could be a title, it could be an artist's name, or, or whatever. So just figure out what's best for your project. F name your files, put them in a folder that's correctly named, and then start uploading from there. And in, within that folder you can create another new folder uh, for each image that you do and put all the different uh, revisions in there so that you can see how many times you've changed it, how it's been used and then uh, later on you can add uh, data to each image as well uh, if that's your prerogative to do later on but just for now make sure that when you upload an image that it's got a good file name and, uh, and then proceed up. You just simply click this and then you come to the next uh, portion where you've got your dashboard. So that's that for this one. Okay, on this part of your dashboard you've um, signed in, you've made a uh, an account and you've created a a username and password you've signed in and this is what the dashboard looks like when you first come and what it does is it allows you to continue using the last image that you were working on or to upload a new one so and that is uh, very easy to um, just to get in to your folder if you've created a folder for your artwork now get in select your image and then click upload and uh, take you to the next part of your dashboard where you can do edits. Okay, here you are. You've um, signed in and you've come to your dashboard and this is where you can now upload phot photographs um, and you can see there there's quite a few different tabs to explore and whilst you're just um, at this moment probably working on a, one particular project I suggest just keep to what you you know what you really need to do for this moment and uh, do it and then come back and ex explore all of the possibilities that Picnic has because there's, there's far more to it and uh, as I mentioned before once you've created an image, they also have uh, links to where you can have these printed out on all types of uh, products, um, both for um, private personal use and for businesses. So, you know, you've got to look at this as a, as a real time saver and uh, something that um, is not a toy. It can be fun in a toy, but it's quite a serious thing that you can use for your business or career and, and uh, it's just step-by-step -step learning. So come back and explore all these different tabs and different layers of, of Picnet.
Okay, here is your dashboard. Um, as you can see here, um, you've got a chance to um, upload an image and hopefully you've got your images in a, in a folder and ready to go and that the images have all been named correctly, the files have been named correctly and uh, come back to this page and see all the different things that you can do with images more than likely you've come in just to to edit something and maybe add some graphics or whatnot very quickly but come and have a look at all the different things you can do there's a lot to look at and um, you just need to have the time to go and, and see how all the different things work together Okay, on this one you really need to, um, for your images, you're going to be making all kinds of images uh, and you're for different purposes. Uh, should you be a webmaster or supplying artwork to a webmaster, you'll be required to provide um, artwork for banners, which are generally um, just narrow strips running horizontally across the page or what they call tower ads. Those are ones that usually run on either left or right columns and they're generally two or three paragraphs, um, short paragraphs or sentences and uh, they're called tower ads and they're generally about 160 pixels across or 120 um, down to 300. Um, the banners are generally like about 160 long uh, 120 something like that uh, but, and but 60 to 90 um, high it's a nice narrow strip that you can actually put a lot of things in there that could be a GIF ad it doesn't need to be static and of course it can link to a website or, or some other service so what we're saying is make a folder give it an appropriate name so you can find it again um, we've made a folder under my pictures. You might have a different configuration, but uh, make yourself a new folder and within that folder you can then go on to create a tree of folders that uh, start off with your images and then you can list them under banners uh, and so on and so forth. So you've got a, a real good idea of where your artwork is and you can find it straight away because um, a, lot of, a lot of people spend too much time looking for their, even with the desktop help, um, search uh, f for file service, even with that, sometimes it's hard because you might not remember how you named it until you get in the, um, the routine of naming your files and folders. Um, it, it can be a waste of time. So just do it straight away, just always name your files and folders appropriately and if you've made a mistake come back and change it because you'll save yourself time later on. So that's that. Uh, okay this is where you can uh, select your file and you just simply click onto the file that you want. These are the folders here and you just click on it, it opens a folder and then you click on to the file and it opens it up in the um, little box here and uh, off you go, it uploads it you don't want to upload too big a file so hopefully you've resized it already in a program that, that does that <coughs> but uh, anything up to about three and a half thousand pixels or something is okay. After that I don't think that it takes it too well but have a go and see what happens. Okay on this one um, you see on the dashboard now we've selected uh, a file and we've uploaded it and it's come up, popped up like this and the first uh, window that you're going to see on your dashboard um, shows you this configuration and it's it's um, uh, all the very quick edits that you might want to do 
you can resize it, you can crop it, and uh, you know all those sorts of things. And uh, once you've done that, you can go along here and choose other tabs. Um, they are all the other steps you can add, like effects and uh, just all those different things that you can do before you are finished. Adding more text, um, adding uh, different little uh, symbols and the things that are created by um, Picnic for you to use. Um, or you might want to. You might just want to uh, play around with it a little bit with a frame. Give it a frame. So that's that's basically here. Is your these are your quick edits, and make sure you always. Uh, scroll down with your middle scroll and make sure you get down to the bottom and investigate all the things that are available because sometimes it, it's strange you don't always see what's always there so give that a go okay on this page you've um, selected a, an image and uploaded it and this is the page that it first comes to. On the left hand column you see uh, quick edits and under here are tools um, and you can see they've all got little symbols which you'll find in a lot of other programs as well. The first one is a crop tool and uh, you, you, you simply drop this on your image and uh, use your cursor to drag and drop at the corners. Um, it's a rotating tool that you can flip the image around different ways. Um, there's just different ones and you need to go in and experience and experiment with all of them and see how, how they affect an image. And, uh, and once you understand what you can do, you get more creative, I might add. And uh, it, you, it, these things excite and fire up your mind and your imagination and you'll, you'll do it once and then you'll think, oh, but if I use that other tool, and you, then you'll come back in and you'll start making some really fantastic work. Once you're familiar with this program, you might like to then go on to other more complicated programs and perhaps even learn to use professional tools like Adobe and some of the other Corel. Oh, there's a whole bunch of different st st standard programs used by the industry. So if you're interested in going that way, this is a good place to learn and see if it's really your thing. Okay, here we are uh, with the crop tool. Uh, this is probably the most used tool of all, um, especially in editing. There's always uh, a better aspect of the photo be it smaller or more narrow or just parts of your photo that just don't need to be in there. So use your cropping tool and uh, know that you can always undo it if you've, if you've made a mistake. Now it's simply a, uh, you take your cursor and you just drag, oh wrong things, drag the corners out and, and this area here becomes larger or, or smaller as per your requirements and then when it's ready you just click it and, and it's finished go on to the next tool um, and if you've done the wrong thing there's a just over here somewhere there's a is an undo button which you can undo and have another go um, and then say like for example you just may not need that space or, or you may want to make this a different color just there's a hundred reasons why but uh, this is definitely a great tool, so um, get in and just don't be frightened of it and know that whatever you do in Picnic you can always undo it so long as you follow the golden rule of keeping one original working uh, copy that you don't, um, you don't change it and then all the other ones that you make from it are kept in a separate folder. So always have a folder for your originals. Anyway, that's how you crop. And this is your crop tool. You simply um, take 
open up the crop uh, um, tab and out pops this tool and you just grab with your cursor a corner and drag it out or raise it up or push it over depending on whether you want it small, large or, or whatever and you can drag it to any area of your image. This is something you might if you had a group of people and you only wanted one person's photo this is how you would take it out.